the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello. Here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Laser Podcast. Andrew is here with me. He's spinning a <laughs> basketball on his finger. I can never do it, man. Oh, man. These you things are got... nubs, too. Maybe they got to be pointier. <laughs> yeah, maybe you do have to have a little bit of a, a actual point of a, a fingertip. Yeah, they do all look like they were sawed off about a half an inch <laughs> Like, Like you were raising your hand in class. Well, if you're and wondering, my dick looks exactly the same. A low flying drone just went <laughs> like those things that like like hedge trim hedges. Oh yeah, it's like, uh, it was my trigger. You were trying to reach the top of a hedge, and it was like <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, you no! know what? They, they don't get smaller at the top. They're no. like the same width. <laughs> oh, like, sausages. They're like little hot dogs. <laughs> yum 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 yum. yum. <laughs> Your, your mom's birthday meal. Oh, uh, if I only had beans in my hand. Oh, boy. Just, oh, hey, you, mom. You, your, <laughs> your mom's <laughs> ideal mother day is you just serving her beans in bed with your hands. Thanks, son. I have always loved you. <laughs> I wish your hands were a little longer so I could have more beans. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, uh, these are, are uh, yeah, these are interesting. Yeah, it's like they painted nails on the third quarter of a. Of well, a finger. you bite your nails down to the little, so they're like little, uh, barely. Like if you looked up in the sky, you'd go, "The moon isn't there," and you go, "No, it's the most, it's the most waxing it will ever be." You know, like a sliver of a moon. Oh yes, yes, I have um, eclipse <laughs> nail. Yeah, you have eclipse nail. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've clipsed them a little too much. With my teeth that aren't there. What te- what tooth are you getting um, them with? Just because gum, I gumming them do, down for a while. I always do the same tooth. Like the my the only place where my teeth like meet every single time, mm. and I know that they do. Yeah, you do this weird thing where you tuck them. <laughs> Wait, show me your strategy because I don't understand. I'm trying how- to figure it out. I Wait. don't know. I'm in a trance every time I do it. I- I'm serious. <laughs> you you do underneath the underneath. bottom. Well, how is that getting anything? Is there a, a nail file on the bottom of your tooth? Because I need both <laughs> teeth to clamp down on the nail and uh-huh. and bite it and. I think I get it going with the bot. Bo- this is do? insane. Wait, wait, try to figure out this what you do. This is insane. Because I don't. You know you- what I'm doing? I'm using a can opener uh, manual okay, and then that's using. That's what a- I'm saying. <laughs> Andrew uses one, just his lower teeth to bite his fingernails. He doesn't even use his top teeth. I use the top teeth to finish the job. I use the top to finish the job. What do you. Oh, to get it uprooted and to lift yeah. it up. <laughs> Ooh, it, you use like. You know those little things that get staples out? Yes, yes. That's what you use yes, for your bottom teeth yes. to pry the nail open from its bed. Ooh. I'm so sorry to everyone listening. Oh, no, I'm thinking about, I had to do that once out of my finger because I, right. you never stapled your fingers. Oh, yeah, you always tell, you told me that you oh. stapled your fingers a lot as a kid. You can still feel it if you've ever you done it. You said it clamped down all the way, like it, it stapled shut on your finger. It closed. Oh, boy. I had to turn the paper in with my thumb. I used thumb. to love those little things that you would. <laughs> uh, I used to love those little things that you would, um, yeah, to get the stapler, oh, stapler they're remover. they're great. That goes, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and you go, nah, 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 nah. I'm hungry for a That's what took care of these fingers. Yeah. God. I had a kid in my class. His his dad ran over his arm with the lawnmower, cut his arm off, and then they reattached it. And that can The whole arm? Whole arm, like it was just dangling. Oh man, I was thinking about that <sighs> guy that got eaten by a shark. Oh, the other <laughs> from day. like six months ago. Yeah, but we did. We, we focused on that a lot. I mean, that was a big moment on our show. Yeah. That was a horrible, <laughs> horrible thing to happen. I'm still thinking of that guy. Um, yeah, getting a whole arm. Did you hear he off. lived? No, shut up. He oh, did not. He, his spirit a- lives on on this podcast. I'll tell you that. Up there, man. Yeah, point up at him. There he goes. There he is swimming. Are you watching the NBA, NBA Finals? No doubt. I watched it the other night. How did you feel about it? Um, well, I'm watching it because Chris was watching it, and he um, he really likes the guy from St. Louis. Jason Tatum? Yeah. Tatum. Tatum. Yeah, yeah I hear he's a good guy. Chris's goal, Chris loves St. Louis, you know, and he wants St. Louis like just to achieve everything. <laughs> As if St. Louis was his, like, you know, he wears it on his sleeve, son. they say. It. He just loves St. Yeah. Louis, and he wants St. Louis. So his goal is that this Tatum guy <laughs> does enough impressive things, wins Boston a I know, championship. I get, can I guess? Yeah. He, 
that it gets a basketball team back here. No. Damn. He wants Tatum. He wants <laughs> he. You know, we everyone who's not in Boston hates Boston sports teams pretty much. Well, right? Boston fans are known to be pieces of shit, but all fans are pieces of shit. But exactly. they're extra. Yes, they're extra. Okay, so he wants a statue of Tatum, who is from St. Louis, e- erected in Boston, so that a famous St. Louisan is being heralded, and as and there's a, a statue, and he thinks that he could probably get it. That this kid is that good. That someday there would be a statue of a St. Louisan in Boston as kind of like a secret fuck you to Boston of like, yeah, you you claim this guy, but we st- we, we started him. <laughs> I think I kind of like it. It's like it's such I know, a. I'm um, trying to think where Michael Jordan's from and if people. He's from feel, North Carolina. Yeah, so he's from North Carolina. Yeah, I wonder they have if, pride. I'm sure, but I wonder if they're like that statue in Chicago. Well, that's how like, I always feel about baseball statue. teams where Chris is like excited about the Cardinals and I go. Because we were talking, I go. David Freeze is the only one, I think that not David Freeze was that David Freeze. Yeah, but he's not playing. He was anymore, from. But I yeah. know, but he but he was impressive for a while, and he, yeah, um, he had a great home run. Oh the, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, Chris has had me watch that highlight. It was an amazing. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I and can get into sports too, if Freeze. someone describes to me what they mean to them. And like what and what they meant at the time. Like Chris walked me through how he felt when the Cardinals were. It was the sixth game of the seven game series. Boston was about to take it all. And then all of a sudden David Freeze stepped up and like like he just described the moment where he was and him and Tim are on the ca- like couch jumping up and down in their Greenpoint apartment, like scre- like and you could just tell he was like it was like me talking about meeting Taylor Swift or something. Like it was just so palpable the excitement. And then he also told me that he was like playing pickleball the other day and he his favorite tennis player is Nadal and that there was this like that they were playing to pickleball against two guys that were like much better than them and him and uh my friend Rob Durham and his friend uh he's a comedian in town they were playing against these two guys and these two guys were like getting a little cocky like because they were just like we're so much better and we're gonna beat these guys and Chris and Rob had him at the first and then the guys came back and they were losing a lot a lot and then Chris was like he remembered this moment that Nadal was like down really like like it was like zero it was something love you know which I don't hear that word out of Chris's mouth a lot so when I do hear it I perk up I go what you're talking about and he goes no I'm talking about a a, a sports score and I was like oh that was close enough um so uh I think he would like that joke and so then he was like and then Nadal just came out of nowhere he had a screenshot of the moment Nadal like turned the game around and like went for this like lunge for the shot and everything turned around and then he ended up winning uh, consecutively winning so many well, I don't even know what game it was or whatever but it was like this moment that for him he was like he channeled that with these cocky guys that were like think thought they were going to take it and he was like it doesn't matter that we're so far out of the like we're not going to win we could and then he turned it around in that moment because he was channeling Nadal and he's like that's why sports matter to me and I'm like sports matter to you so that you can do well in sports <laughs> like it's always like just yeah, you yeah, can apply yeah, it more yeah, to sports yeah. and but that's how I it was sweet help the village no yeah it was yeah exactly by it's giving never, them t-shirts like, that weren't used in the championship <laughs> non uh like non-professional pickleball game against two guys from south county well it sounds no, like I mean, it, it sounds like it chris inspiring chris loves an underdog story so it's like that's what st louis is to a lot of people a lot of times with sports it's the smaller city against the big city of boston and that's the idea of tatum like he's from a smaller even though st louis pretty big city it's not like he's from the he's farm the 16th but, the biggest yeah yeah but still like i I get that. Like, I would, dude, if I showed you, I got to show you a picture of when I was a sophomore in high school playing high school football. I was tiny. Th- like, it does, yeah, Nikki, the jersey went past my knees. Yeah. Like, I'm I not. I mean, I remember seeing a picture of you. When was that picture where you were the tiniest of all the girls? <laughs> I yes. mean, you were, you, it, they were lined up by height and you were smaller than all the girls. The grass was taller than me. Yeah. I was like, I'm over here. And then they shaved my nubs off. So w- did Rudy inspire you? Did like the little m- m- engine who could, the little. Don't even get me started on Rudy. T- Rudy, I've watched m- Field more. Field Mouse that I've went to the big city? 300 times. Yeah. Rudy. And yeah. I'm not even kidding. Because you felt like you might be Rudy. Yeah, dude. And my coach, here's the funny thing. My coach would be like, dude, you have so much heart. If anyone had oof, heart like oof. Colin, I'm like. Heart is the worst thing to have. <laughs> heart Sorry. Heart is like, he's a nice comedian. It's that's yeah. thirty heart should be the name the score. It's zero heart sucks. Love 
Yeah. yeah. No, it's that's what I'm saying. It's like well, it's like uns- it's like the coach's award. That was a thing. Well, I used to get most improved and stuff like that. Uh, most dedicated. That's uh, all heart. Yeah. Uh, Even uh. like I I complimented someone yesterday and I was like, "You work so hard." And I was like, "Oh boy, uh. why did I say that? They they're just talented. Why do I have to say you work hard?" Ugh. Just give them a fucking compliment. But the funny part was is like I didn't have that much heart. Yeah, I was going to say I was- <laughs> You have. I barely art. I was too small to have art. Yeah, you. you, What you had was a negligent family home and a desire to to succeed outside of it. Just to have friends and to 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 get a warm cooked meal with another family. (laughs) You wanted that like carb load meal before the game that felt like a dude. I hit. You wanted you had you had you probably had heart. No, I did. I mean, for how small I was, but and you're just a good athlete, though. I mean, can can he say that, or was it just that? Is that what you say to someone who looks so tiny (laughs) that has a good athletic ability, but it's like it's never going to happen for you? I mean, did you like like Muggsy Bogues? I mean, I was. Were there people like? Didn't you look up to shorties? Yeah, like Danny DeVito. (laughs) I looked them in the eye. (laughs) <laughs> yeah danny devito was my, Wait, was look, my sports hero <laughs> my sports up, hero is webster did you look up to any <laughs> short basketball players that were like dunkers that no were like, i fucking you know, love muggsy seven. bugs uh, spud webb spud webb was five seven and he could dunk of course these guys go, both sound short oh yeah spud webb, well, spud webb sounds like what we call your hands <laughs> my hands spud webbs <laughs> You want beans, mom? Oh my God. You that want is so beans? The perfect name for your hands. But so Muggsy yeah. Bogues is also like a tiny guy's name. Yeah, dude, I was I was obsessed with these. I didn't want to pick them just because I was small too. Like that's the other thing. It's like you're small. You need to like these small people. It's like, but yeah, if they could do it, so could I. That yeah. kind of idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I just remember just like I would. I started on special teams, and uh. I, I'm, we were in what does going, that mean? So, so special teams special teams okay how do i describe you know when they kick off yeah and there's like 10 guys running down and then the I'm guy receives out. it yeah that's special team now imagine what? if i'm what chris that, what imagine if i'm chris telling you wait special <laughs> team that doesn't make any sense so the people that start the game yes and the punt? Do you know the punt? The punter? But why is that special? Why is that different than the rest of the well, team? Well, there's offense, defense, and special teams. Oh, wait. There's another. There's a third? Well, why doesn't anyone teams. go, special teams, special teams? Because it sounds pretty bad. It's always defense. There's never offense being yelled, and there's never special teams being yelled. And special teams, does it is it for the worst players on the team? They're not the best. Okay, so that's a yes. Yeah. Okay. But there have been special teams guys that have become legends. Like, is a kicker a special team? Yes. So it's like things that aren't offense or defense. Yes. So water boy? No. Ball shiner? Maybe. Inflator? Ball yes. deflator? <laughs> Tom Brady. Tom topical. Brady. Kiss his mouth. <laughs> Son. Baby boy. So I was on special team. Oh, this was the best. My coach one time goes, there's two things you got to know about football. Two things. Uh-huh. Offense, defense, and oh, special teams. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What a moron. And it was one of the biggest speeches before the biggest game. Where do you learn all this stuff? Like, What where, do you mean? Where as a young boy do you learn about football and what it means? Like, how do you? That's all we learn. That's but how did you we... learn, like, there are four downs and there are this many points? And, like, how do you, how do you put up, where do you put all that when you're a little kid? That's so much information. There's so much technical stuff in football. Well, football, baseball, every sport, soccer. Yeah. Um, well, usually as a kid, it's just like hand it off, run that way, and then you slowly. It's oh, not like so you a, don't really know. It's almost like being in band where you just like blow into the instrument and kind of like <laughs> mime it, and then over time you're like, maybe I should learn a note. I never learned. <laughs> I know, but I'm. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I know. But what you're when saying. you're doing football, do you like you didn't start? If see, this is the thing about me. Yes, I would have had a panic attack because I didn't know all the... I'd be like, mm-hmm. well, I don't understand what the the yards are. I don't well, know what a yard... you play field hockey. Yeah, and I, I used to have panic because I didn't know the technical stuff, and so I didn't want to play. Like, I don't... I need to know everything before I start something because what are you doing if... But you learn through doing. There's so many things that you've learned Not through doing. Not in an official game. You What's the learn... worst that could happen? You look bad? 
you hit the ball the wrong way or you send it to someone who Dude. isn't you send it to someone who's not that person was open over there <laughs> what were you thinking you fucking idiot like that kind of stuff i would say why do i feel like you would if you leaned into competitiveness in that stuff you could really like it you like being competitive yes but only I agree with naturally Andrew. good at but only on things I'm not. But you are naturally pretty. You're, dude. I've seen you throw that fucking whatever that your dad's like Navajo like throwing ball thing he had out his. Oh yeah, I mean you're good at that. You got. You would have been good at lacrosse. That I told you to read. Joy. Come alive. It talks all oh, about. Oh yeah, this. I'm reading it. I started reading it. Nice. Yeah, I gotta read that. Oh I my god, did I, I did Noah to read it, give it to you? It's so good. Well, because it's that guy from that t- the tools book that we love that Whoa. I read a fourth of. Not even a Both fourth. Maybe I got the tools to read that book. Yeah, that one was so good. Uh, it's what is it called? Coming Alive. I downloaded both the audiobook and at first I downloaded the audiobook and I was like, fuck, I didn't mean to. I wanted because I like reading self help books, like listening to them, I'll just fall asleep. Um, and then I downloaded the and I was like, okay, I guess I'm spending $30 on this book that would have cost me 15 So I downloaded both and then I was reading along as they were like talking. The audiobook though is like. <laughs> They insisted the uh, the authors insisted they read it. Not the best choice. Yeah, yeah. I really know there's like yeah. a guy with like a very thick like Jewish Brooklyn accent. Barry. Yes, and he has no. <laughs> there's no like difference. Like he doesn't get excited. There's no tonal shift anywhere. It's very monotone. A couple um, of voice cracks. I like that idea though. But listening, to, it's kind of like subtitles. But... It's like li- it reminds me of being in class. And the problem is, I always read ahead because I'm like, you're so mm. slow. And so I started doing it faster. And then I was. But anyway. It was. Um, it is helpful because as soon as I wanted to go to sleep, I was like, I kind of just want to drift off with this. And then you can put the audiobook on stop reading at 30 minutes. So uh, it stops. So you don't just read the whole book throughout the night. Then you don't know where to. But where I do know about us. Let's talk about special teams. There's a thing called a, the special force. The, the, the part X. Part X. Yes. Part X. Part X is a thing in the book. And it's the thing that prevents you from. It's like someone with a gun to your head mm-hmm. telling you. Not to do things and to stay in bed. Don't, don't, um, hey, dude. Eat, eat that extra helping. Hey, man. Uh, don't exercise today. There's like constantly a, a part of you that is forcing you at like a, like pointing a gun at you, making you feel like you are, you have no choice but to surrender to these bad habits that prevent you from reaching your full potential as an, um, an NBA athlete, which is what I'm going to be once I really. Start. Stop listening to this thing. You can be anything you want. Yeah, and p- at a certain age. <laughs> exactly. That's what oh, I told Chris. Was it insulting? That's yeah, part that's, X. Yeah. Well, I told Chris last yeah. night because he was talking Chris. about. Um, All right, like, I'm gonna be in the NFL starting now. I'll well, start he's tri- is this insulting? Can I just ask you a qu- quick question as a boy? Yeah. Um, no, that's the answer. Yeah, I know. What I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Chris last night about he, he's training for this bike trip he's doing and he like r- does like sometimes two or three hour rides a day. Like he's really training and he's working with someone and he's doing like nutrition and like all he's just doing a whole regimen, but he's like very dedicated to it, but it takes so much time. And um, I said to him and he's like, I don't know. I just really feel I was like, he's like, it's not sustainable, but it's, you know, I'd like to do it the rest of my life in some way. And I was like, oh, there's probably a way to moderate it. But and um, he was like, I was like, but it's cool, though, that you can like get so dedicated to something and like actually do it. Like he he does not skip a workout like he's really good about it. Um, and he, I said to him, he was like, I just feel like I'm really good at it and I could actually be really, really good. And I said, that's true. Like you're an NBA. I've always said that to him, a natural born athlete. Which is a joke that it makes it sound like I'm a dumb sports girl. That's like you're an NBA. Yeah. Like it sounds like I think. He, so, I said you're you're obviously a natural born athlete, and um, yeah, you could be you could be the like the best for your age bracket. Is that a bad thing to say? Not at all. It's true though. Like he could re he could be because there's like sports competitions at every level of age, right? Yeah, that's how it is in jujitsu. Well, was that? Yeah. Was that was there offense taken? No, I was just worried to descend it because I did have the caveat of like, okay, he's not going to be as good as he could have been at twenty two doing this. Now, but he's forty one. He's about to be forty one, and he's pretty. Um, I think he, he could be the best forty one year old at this thing. I do feel like he didn't take offense. He, I think he was no, but, I, I, but at the time I, I was think... like, if someone told me you could be the best for your age group, I'd be like, um, fuck you. Yeah. I, 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 I'm too insecure to handle that age thing. 
Well, here's the thing about cycling. I really do think if you took it serious, you could be om- almost just as good at 41 as if you started at 22 and took it. Real. Yeah, there are some. It's like a weird like sport, that. like ping pong, you go, golf, long distance you running know. for women. They're usually in their mid 30s when they're w- winning for like all women's ages. So there are things like that. Now, if you said you could, you'd be the best for 60 and older. Yeah, that, at, 41, a, at 41. That would be insulting. Would All be right, insulting. let's go to break and come back after this. All right, welcome back to the show. Um, I We have a guest now. Um, we took too much time, and so we didn't. I didn't properly introduce her before and, say, and warn you guys, but we have a guest on the show. Um, she runs the Mayday Rescue, which is where I got Luigi and Marion in Los Angeles, and she's also a lesbian. Please welcome <laughs> to the show. She also is the host of the possibly online series, um, uh, Who's Your Doggy, which is I just filmed um, yesterday. Um, uh, please welcome Natalie Garcia. Hello. Hi. Hi. Natalie's in town because we filmed, she came to me from LA to film the finale of the show, Who's Your oh. Doggy? Yeah. Where we find out. Uh, if Natalie's gay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's Thanks literally for coming is. out. Thanks. <laughs> no, they can tell through DNA now. What? Yeah, we can just tell through oh, DNA. Oh, you're a Shih Tzu and a lesbian. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so the show is like where we, you do, you like, uh, we get swab samples from the dog and then right. you come back. And, and then we reveal. Oh my God. Sla- this they're is made like of. Finding yes. out like your family tree kind of yes. show. Exactly. I mean, it's. But through the dog. It sent shockwaves through wow. Luigi's yeah. life after this revelation. He is not yes. the same. I cannot reveal what he is yet because that <gasps> episode will come oh, later, but yes. I'll tell you off air. Yes. Um. So, Nat- but Natalie. Um, I said she's a lesbian because we we, we talked yesterday <laughs> about like what we we're going to talk about and she was like, can we not talk about, like we can talk about rescue stuff. but Yeah, like, a little bit. I just didn't want to like, you know. Yeah, like. You know, know. There's more to me than just a dog lady. Yeah, there's another as, dog lady. As in and lesbians. You, you live with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, there is another dog lady I live with. Okay, well, Natalie, um, uh, so w- when did you know you were gay? <laughs> we get to ask Boy. all our lesbian questions. I mean, I kind of have a lot. Great, I love you. this. Let's when dive on in. When did you know in. you were gay? Uh, when I used to want to be like my teachers, but realized I didn't want to be like them. I wanted Wait to be in second. them. So you wanted to be like <laughs> them. I'll hook up with your like female. hook up with my yeah. female what, teachers. What 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 um age was this? Like seven. Seven, just like wanting to like, you're like, yeah, oh I was it. like, oh, I want to be like that when I'm older. Like, I like how she dresses and I'd always be kind of obsessed with them, but like didn't realize it. Like yes. everyone else would just kind of leave to recess and I'd like hang out and just literally thought, oh, maybe I want to be a teacher. Yeah. But then I would so do that with out every profession. Any little girl out there woman. who wants to be a teacher. <laughs> I mean, you you're might lesbian. not be a person that wants to help our youth, but you just want to get in them. Yep. Um, yep. That makes sense to me. I feel like I've even said that a lot of times where... Guys I've dated, I'm like, oh, wait a second. They don't like me. They want to be me. Like, I've had the opposite where it's like they don't, they don't like me. They just go like, wait, how did you get that thing? Like, I want to, they want to, because I have a very masculine energy. So they're like, they, they want found, my confidence. This is how they found out they were gay. <laughs> exactly. I was going to ask. I was like, is that where we're going? <laughs> it's weird. Two roads <laughs> Two lead roads. to the same well, thing. Yeah. Wait, when did you know? No, 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 no. Um, I came out when I was 14. 14? Wow. So I like knew. So I am a gold star. Wow, you are. No Never penis, had a penis here. Yeah. Oh my God. Real. Anyway. 14. Yeah. Did, how, did you struggle with it before you came out or was it? Um... Not really. Honestly, for me, I kind of was just like that kid that like, I like to shock people. Yeah. So I was like pretty excited. My mom is also, yes. my parents are divorced, but my mom has always been bi, but she also likes to like embarrass me. So like my friend picked me up for like, we were literally going to like have coffee or something. And when he picked me up, my mom was like, make sure to wear a condom. I mean, seatbelt. And so I yes. wanted to just get her right away. And I was like, mom, I'm a lesbian. I like chicks. And then I left. And when I came back, she was like, was that serious like I don't care and I was like I mean maybe I don't really I kind of want to date <laughs> girls and she's like great and so then from that moment on I kind of was like I'm gonna do this because I came out and yes. so now I'm a big now you're dyke. locked in way now to I'm stick to in. a bit <laughs> yeah like, I really took it yeah yeah, yeah. talk about <laughs> so, determination and actually I'm straight and I'm getting yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> I've held on this too long I just really always wanted to be a teacher I yeah. realized that was yeah. uh, and now I'm quitting everything and yeah. I'm hoping to get my teaching degree um but that is interesting like wanting to shock that's what I want I used to like want to be gay just so I could make my parents mad yeah 
it, because it was a thing that I knew that they knew I couldn't choose because I knew my parents fell on the right side of like no one's choosing yeah. to be like it's yeah. not it's just you're you are yeah and so I knew that they couldn't get mad at me about it right you know <laughs> but that they would be secretly a little bit disappointed because sure. of the whole I just don't want my daughter to have people judge her and right. struggle even right. though it's like their judgment that they're sure, projecting sure. on other people yeah but it is t- you know it is yeah. tougher yeah. to be g- gay yeah. i mean that's what my grandma said right away she wasn't like i don't want to you know she's catholic she's hispanic all the things yeah but that was it she was like i just don't want you to have a hard life and here yeah. i am like marching in pride parades making out with ladies i'm like i don't know how this is going to be hard for anyone well, it's hard but, to march for yeah. that long it is it's just your tough legs on the get knees. so tired yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. what ends. happened to sit-ins yeah i'm sure your grandma's <laughs> life was so yeah. easy being relax. straight it like you're like, <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. love when women are like my life because i'm straight is just so simple and easy. yes yes <laughs> dealing know? with men is so <laughs> right exactly just easy breezy exactly they, they, literally men <laughs> cause women and and vice versa uh cause uh so much pain in their lives like just and not that lesbians don't have that same i mean the thing about lesbians though that i always feel is that you guys just fall real fast i mean there's the u-haul lesbian where it's like because that's the way girls like that's the way i fall for guys like i just know right away let's just do this and then when you have two people feeling that same way yeah does it happen fast? Oh, yeah. If we actually, we joke. I mean, my wife and I feel like are the very, we're like the opposite of that. Like we were together two years before we moved in. Mm. And then it took us seven years to get married. And so now it's been 13 years. But in 13 years, which is a long time, we know people who've been in like, who've been married like three times, yes. gotten divorced. All of a sudden they're on Instagram. I'm in love. I'm in love. Yeah. A year later, they're sobbing on Instagram. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I know. People like, get off Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Get off yeah. Instagram is really, <laughs> it's, it's really the answer. <laughs> so you have a wife. I do have a wife. What took you so long to, you think, pull the trigger on getting, <laughs> moving in and then getting engaged? Uh, or do you want to fight joke. the stereotype? That was it. Yeah. I was like, fuck you guys. It was like, fuck you, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, stereotype. Fuck That's like everybody. your whole life. That's it's my like, whole life. Fuck you. I'm doing what I'm doing. What I want. <laughs> I'm doing it. Going against everything. Uh, no, I don't know. We just like there was just no rush. I think yeah. we're just like level headed. And I was a little bit of a whore before that, so I think really? she was trying to be like. Mm. But was that hard being a whore as a lesbian? Because wouldn't <laughs> no. because when you have amazing. sex, with girl girls get attached from sex. Yeah, and intimacy. Yeah. Did you? I'm saying, was it st- a struggle for you in terms of like? girls getting attached to you and you having to be like, uh, this is just casual because no. a lot of girls enter into things thinking it's going to be casual and are like, oh, I'm fine with it. And right. They- I mean, that happened, but I'm just kind of like, I hate to say it because back then I feel like I was kind of just like an ass and I think I just broke hearts. Like I was I totally that person. That. Like people being like, that was really fun. You want to hang out tomorrow? And I'd be like, yeah, maybe. Keep on trucking. I'll call you sometime. Yeah, Hell yeah. Like- Keep on trucking is such a... <laughs> Keep on you hauling. Yep. Keep on you hauling. Uh, yep. Did why? How were you able not to get attached? Or, um, I mean, I guess I did. I don't know. I don't know yeah. why I wasn't able. I think I just like liked. I think also when I just moved to LA, I was like really wanting to meet people and get out and yeah, you know. And I had a relationship prior to that, and I really just didn't feel like ready to dive in because exactly like you said, it's like then I knew I was going to be in another relationship and another relationship, and I was like, no, yes, let's have some fun. That's a good. Yeah. But it's just, it's so hard because you think you're going to have fun and then you just want more of the same, the same thing. same fun. But right. are you, do you, um, do you feel like you have a more, because I get it, I get a sense of a masculine energy from you. Or yes. are you like, in your relationship, are you the, I'm not, not top bottom, but like every relationship, <laughs> straight or gay, oh, yeah. has someone who's masculine and it could be the yeah. man is the feminine energy. Totally, like, totally. What's oh yeah, 100%. Well, that's what's funny is like, if you see Maria, everyone's like, oh, she's a butch lesbian. Yeah. Like you would just think that. But she is like, so much more femme than me. She cries at like any story of like someone being nice. Like she'll see like an old lady, a guy jump out of a car to cross the street with her and she'll start sobbing in the car. And oh I'm like, God. are you kidding me? And like, yeah, so I'm totally more the guy if you were going to <laughs> yes. do that. Which yes. is like, understand what you're saying. I hate saying that, but yes. yes. But if you look at me, I look like a femme lesbian. Yeah, you look like the feminine yeah. energy role. Yeah. But who made the first move and everything? Who who was like, okay, we're doing this? I did because also... <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert guys she's 20 years older than me so that probably was also why that's I took a little right so I think that was it because she, she felt like a creep she was my teacher <laughs> from second grade <laughs> Mrs. Eivner <laughs> honestly that, that could be Mrs. a Eivner. huge possibility <laughs> Ruth 20 uh, years older than you yes yeah, so that was of course an issue not Wait, a, you know when you started dating was that 
what, what, I mean, how did this even get kicked off? Which also, can I just say that I thought that Maria and I were the first like age gap lesbian couple. Then here comes Sarah Paulson oh, and whoa. Holland Taylor. Holland Taylor, that is. I'm like, sorry. What yeah. is that? Like 33 30, years or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But like, we were the OG anyway. Um, Twenty years is a lot. It's still a lot. Yeah, for sure. Because now I look at myself being thirty six, and I'm like obviously a sixteen year old. But even a twenty three year old is what when we met. There's no way I would even think about dating a twenty three year old now. Yeah. And that was her thing is she wasn't even entertaining it either. We just like met at a party. Like she lived near me, and she literally was like, "Oh, you just moved to L A. Like sure, I'll show you some cool places." Like it wasn't romantic. I was seeing other people. Oh really? And then it just we like decided to hang out all the time. And my roommate literally finally came in my room one night, and she's like, "You talk on the phone with her for like two hours a night." and you're just laughing and laughing and laughing. She's like, I've never seen you so happy. And I was like, yeah, but she's old and I'm a child. Like, yeah. there's no way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and on her end, her friends were saying the same thing where they were like, yo, it's a 23-year-old. What are you doing? And she's like, I'm just going to have fun. Like, this isn't going anywhere. It's just going to be fun. Yeah. And so she, she didn't want to be a creep. And so yes. it was up to me, basically. So yes. I think we got drunk one night and then we like, I like made a move and we like made out. And then we both were like, wait a second. And then at one point we broke up for like 20 minutes and we're sobbing in a cafe by saying like, oh, we shouldn't do this. All of our friends are saying, what are we doing? Yeah. And we basically were like, if we're this upset, let's just keep doing this and having fun until we're not having fun anymore. Oh, that's great. And it's been 13 years. I'm still having a pretty oh good time. Oh, my God. Yeah. 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about this yesterday, I guess, about how couples are, um, how you think couples will be doing well from Instagram and then all of a sudden they divorce like out of nowhere. Yeah. And like how that happens. So like we just or you hang out with couples and you think, oh, they're great. You go out to dinner yeah. with them. And then a week later, you find out they're divorcing. Right. You're like, we saw no signs of it. And no how signs. much people kind of hide that stuff. Yeah, it's from crazy. Everyone. Or you just don't know. Maybe they are just really good friends and it's fine. And one of them just realized I need more than that. Yes. And oh, like everybody so needs healthy. different stuff. It's yeah. So healthy. so healthy. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, that, what do you mean it's so healthy? Are you be, you're being facetious? No, no. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. Oh, you aren't? Uh uh. Oh, okay. I was being for real. Like, that is healthy. To just be like, oh, we're just friends. Yeah. Let's, do, yeah. Yeah. To just go your separate ways just because you both decided maturely that this isn't right but no hard feelings yeah, and everyone's right. sad about it i it's love just a, a couple that stays friends after they yeah. divorce like stays good friends yeah. and you can tell they're almost like brother sister friends yeah it's like raise kids that's so cool to me i know i don't know how people do that someone recently either. um but like uh and you're married right Correct. when did you get married six years ago this past saturday oh, was wow. just our six year anniversary oh june 11th and oh yeah. What were was it hard to get people the, your family on board with someone you having a wife that's 20 uh, years older than you at no, first? No, same thing. I kind of was just like fuck everybody. I'm doing something different. Like what, I think it wasn't like surprising to them. Do the age do you see what what are the big um discrepancies with your age where you're like, "Oh, that's um just references?" No, I mean that's the other thing is so for me like I actually hate to say this to you but like I don't really know any Taylor Swift songs like yes. I don't know stuff Damn. of I know I don't yes. know anything this I'm just like I've always been like a 1960s and 70s buff like that's always been my thing oh, well, so there's fits. like a lot of references actually this morning I was watching Three's Company great show yeah and I actually <laughs> called my she, my wife called me and I was like I have to go I have to figure out what Chrissy's getting into and she's like who and I was like you know Three's Company and she's like god I haven't seen that show since the 70s I was like it's a great show we that's should watch so it funny um <laughs> but I yeah really no funny. there's there's not a lot I mean yeah you know yeah i can't think of what i think when we get when we're the holland taylor age yeah that's might gonna be, be a little that's gonna be you know, different but been wanting to been wanting to ask sarah paulson what do old people taste like oh my god depends <laughs> oh my god. Hey Ew. Hey leave the comedy to the comedians over here <laughs> um yeah that's gonna be di that's gonna be the weird thing when that i mean a andrew was in a 16 year gap Ooh. relationship yeah and Older so he is are you a lesbian too i am right. <laughs> you know it's a choice i made He's the feminine energy lesbian. i was 13 and a half actually yeah <laughs> no offense <laughs> It's pretty impressive. Do you have um? Do you have cultural rep? Like, is, was there any kind of thing? I, I thought there was. I mean, she knows some songs that obviously I hate. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like. But I, I think like, it has to do with who raised you. Like your parents. Yeah. Like a lot of the music you love as a kid is just what your parents listen to. Yes. Yeah. So like, you know, her parents listen to you know O Town. 
and I love her. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Her parents like listen to Tom Petty and she's so music wise and all that shit. Like, yeah. I don't know. I it so, I know it sounds cheesy when a guy goes, you know, actually we have a lot of in common and and no, it doesn't I know she's an old soul, but you always make fun of that. Oh, like I mean, an old yeah, soul. Yeah, when guys say that girls have old souls, <laughs> right? It's, it's really obnoxious to me. But why is it obnoxious? Because to you? it's not the truth. Yeah. Like it can be. Yes, she can all. <laughs> I think you would still date her even if she, like, oh, the right. old soul isn't what's reeling you in right. for a young girl. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But I think people get mad when you're like, look, but, I'm 42. I'm in, I was insanely immature and never been in a real relationship. That, it checks out. And then she, she... You're a young soul. I'm a, yeah, I'm a young... <laughs> and she is too. That's where it matches up. She's not an old soul. I mean, she she is extremely Wait, mature. Wait, so how old is she? In her 20s? 26. Okay. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, like, some people are like, that doesn't matter. The number is what, you know, like, some people don't want to hear that shit. Like, some people are, oh, you're immature for your age. That's yeah. why you should be with someone, tw- you know, 20 years young. It's like, right. yeah. yeah. No, like, I that's just. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's, it, it really is fine. It's just like, I I think that I just get annoyed when it's just like, don't, don't rule out the fact that she's young and hot. Right. And that you have time to oh, have like kids. No, that. that's, that's right. 90% of it. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. gorgeous. Because <laughs> yeah. this is the thing. It's like, you know, if I think there are men, older men that want kids and let's say like, yeah. let's say your wife wanted kids and didn't want to have sure. them. Right. She would need someone who, and but she doesn't know when she wants to have them. Yeah. She right. wants a little bit of time. Right. You got to pick someone in their 20s right. if you want time. Right. Yeah. If you want to have kids, you cannot marry a girl in your in her 30s if you still want five to 10 years of right. no kids with the person uh, that you want to have kids right. with. You can't do it. Right. So someone like me, for a guy in his 40s who's like, I want to have kids when I'm 50 or whatever, you know, that's he's entitled to that. I'm not going to, I'm I'm ruled out. And that sometimes makes me upset. Right. Where I'm just like, oh, I can't. Every every guy I think thinks that women in their 30s, and especially me at 38, they're like, well, she can't even have kids. Probably well, just like, surprise them and be like, yo, I froze so many eggs. I, You're well, welcome. I didn't, and no. I don't want to. Well, they don't know that. I, that's a good point. <laughs> just lie. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, they know now if they're listening. Yeah, you well, can buy any point. eggs. Yeah. I mean, they don't know. <laughs> they don't yeah, know, they don't know egg who's egg it is. Just say I froze <laughs> eggs. There's some. Yeah, and they'll be like, cool. <laughs> they are my eggs. I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm vegan, but they're organic. Right? They're organic. And then when it comes time, you're like, oh, weird. We waited too long. They're shriveled up. Sorry. And he's like, what about those frozen eggs? And I'm like, they're in the, fr- you want, what are those? What does that have to do with us having a baby? Right. Do those, you want those? Do you, I can thaw them out and make you a, an Hard omelet. Hard eggs? But can yeah. you make an omelet? <laughs> I that, think that's, that's bigger lie. No. <laughs> oh my God. The other night. Oh my God. We have to go to break. We'll come back with more after this. All right. We're back. Um, the other night, uh, Chris was here and he brought over like his, like he, he brought over like his healthy food, like ingredients to make something, but he was like so tired. And I, he was like, I was like, do you just want me to put a pizza in? Cause he was like, I don't want to make my broccoli and my chicken. And I was like, and then he was like, well, could you, if you made it, I would eat it. And I was like, I get to make something for you. I felt so domestic, even though I burnt the broccoli and it, it actually was good. It was a little bit charred, but it was good. And I felt I've never cooked anything ever for a boy, and I love, I loved it. I loved like, oh, does a baby? I think I like <laughs> when boys are babies. Yeah, so much. Well, you do that with Luigi. I yeah. So it's the same thing. You just, just want to date a dog that's a man. Luigi is only nice to me, honestly, <laughs> and like loves me when I go like, oh, I pretend like he's sick, and then he goes, oh, and he like falls into me. I go, are you a baby? And then he'll just get like really like schlumpy. <laughs> But it's like that he can only, I feel like I can only give love when someone or something is sick. Right. And that they like can't fight me off. Right. <laughs> that sounds bad. But well, like, maybe it's like a competitive it thing where like, like if they're too strong, then it's like, I don't know. Like, why wouldn't you want to help a strong person? I do. But I feel like they're always like, I got it. Oh, okay. Right. I, I feel like w- w- either with Luigi, like. When they when someone needs to be babied because they're sick, they get a little bit more like soft and they're just a little <laughs> bit needy. more loving. Needy. Yeah. I like I like, I like neediness. Needy. Wait, did you say that your boyfriend wanted you to cook chicken? Did you say chicken? Yeah, but I and he he eats chicken. That's not like a deal breaker for you. No, That's interesting. Unfortunately, if it were, I would be alone forever and ever and <laughs> ever true. ever. I I mean, there's yeah. no vegans out there. Like, Are you a vegan? I'm not, but oh. I'm a vegetarian. But there's a lot in LA. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't live in LA. I live in St. Louis I where, know. you know, dairy is king. Chicken right. is vegan here. I guess, but yeah. He's it's very, true. It's <laughs> not meat. He's really sweet and like, he only brings over chicken because I told him it was okay. Like generally he's like, he'll respect you. He really, he he tries and he really wants to be vegan. Like, and he goes, I know that doesn't mean anything. And I go, yes, it does. Like yeah. it means something to me that you, you want, that is a goal of yours at some point. Right. Like that's all I need. And, and if he's, he's like, just conscientious about it and like probably cutting back eating meat when he's with you, yes. which is something. And he, and he bought all this plant-based stuff and he sent me like a picture of it. Like he, he wants to try, like he knows Cute. it's the right thing to do. So that stuff matters to me. It's romantic. And the chicken was alive. So oh. Nikki yeah. had to kill it herself. So right. it felt it like was, hunting. As long yeah. as he came over and I got to cuddle with it, it was sick. <laughs> so I, it, t- it accepted my love. It died of old age. Like, you want a widow <laughs> piece of seed, widow baby chicken. <laughs> Do you Speaking want some of, seasoning? I'm having a bird lady come over to the oh, house boy. today. Oh right. Oh, Two. that's not you. That's not me. Oh, no, <laughs> she's a dog lady. <laughs> yeah, different. U haul dog lady. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a. a I'm fo- probably fostering a um, Quaker parrot. Um, so you it's know, religious. Do you know where it came from? Yeah, it. Well, it's yeah, it came from some fucking breeder situation where okay. the par- the parents probably got it for their kid, being like, "I'll get my five year old a parrot, right?" And we want one that talks, so we got to right. get this one. So it probably came from a breeder, <laughs> and then they realize it lives forty years, right? And they're like, "Fuck," because I think it's like five or five to eight years old is what they're like placing it. Does at. she His bring is- like a cage and all the things for you? Yeah, they're gonna bring everything. As a foster, right. they like supply you with everything. Nice. And, you know, they don't usually like people that are like, I just want to try this out to see if I want it. Right. Like, you know, no. you work yeah. in rescue. Yeah. No, screw that. Yeah. And I mean, that's what happened to me with where I was like, can I just keep them? Right. And I didn't, but I didn't know that. I wasn't like, I just want to try this dog out because yeah. they were telling me that a lot of people go like, um, they, they'll foster a, a bird that works for their lifestyle. Yeah. And then they'll be like, I don't really like it. <laughs> Um, it's just like not and they're like well this isn't about you liking it right. you're just giving it a home until right. we find a home like if that was if That's it was about you liking doing. it right. you would be buying a you right. know like, forever yes right, right. this and is just so, temporary like I put it on my shoulder and I was like and brought it to a bar and that was cool but now like <laughs> and I took some selfies yeah I took like three selfies I got 300 likes and they keep going down <laughs> I don't know if the bird's getting uglier or I'm getting older <laughs> this bird isn't getting me enough likes can I return it <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's it really is. That's what that. you should do. Do a rent a puppy. I should for Instagram Just in for LA. Instagram. You can make and take a picture in front of a pink wall yes. with the puppy. Yes. Oh, and then it doesn't have to be alive. Called just bad people. Have to be alive. And then yeah. you just tag those people and we know they're bad people. <laughs> right. That just want to rent a dog. Yeah. yeah. I mean that we kind of do that on accident, which we don't <laughs> yes. mean to. But we offer trials and so it's like people yeah. can have a week before they adopt. And so we have to seed those people out to make sure because we've had those few people that are like they get the dog and for five days they take them everywhere in LA and we just are following them and they're taking picture, picture, picture. <laughs> and then literally day five, they're like, this is so much work. Um, I just realized we're not a good fit. Oh and I'm like, yo, god. bitch, your Instagram um, oh, it looks like you were best friends. My god. Yeah. And then what? Don't people have questions like, what? What happened to the dog? No, people are idiots. Oh, people just god. follow. You know, like yeah, people twenty something year olds now. They just like comment with stars or flames. Like, Ugh. there's no like, they're not asking. They're like, like can is we that trade your it dog? In? Like, nobody's. Yeah. Can we trade <laughs> exactly. it in for like a younger, yeah. two day younger one? Yeah, exactly. This bird doesn't with get Botox. Me. If I mean, I need to get a million followers. Do you know what the bird's bird does name not is? push me over. Uh, his name is Elmer, <laughs> which Elmer. is such a cute, cute name. That is cute. Because I kind of so liked cute. it because I was over there looking at this. I was because Chris for my birthday contacted this, this rescue in town that I have already sent in applications to, and they uh-huh. just like never got or they got back to me, but it went to spam. I don't even know what happened. But I've already like <laughs> been like stalking their bird page, and um and they never had a bird for me because it always said like not good in an apartment, not good with other animals. But then um this one bird. So I was over there playing with different birds because he just set up a play date for my birthday. And so I was talking to these women and um, and they were like, I could see them like kind of going like, because I was like, I want to get a bird at some point. I just want to do it responsibly. I want to make sure to give it the best life. I will have a bird sitter come over. Like I want a bird that can like have people come in. They won't freak out. Like yeah. I'll always have someone with the bird. It will never be left alone. Whatever you tell me to do. And they were like, are you thinking Elmer for her? And like, it was just kind of like, kind of like almost getting set up. Yeah. They were like, I don't know. He's really great. I don't know. And I was like, wait, so tell me about Elmer. And they're like, well, he needs a lot of attention. Like he likes to be a little baby. And I was like, 
I love, <laughs> I want a bird that's a baby. Yeah, you're like, cooking broccoli. I, I almost yeah. didn't want to say that. Yeah. Charred he's broccoli. He's 5'2". He's uh, I want to freeze seven his eggs. pounds. <laughs> um, I almost didn't say, because I didn't want to say, like, I want a bird that will just be a little baby and I can just pet it all day because that's about me. That's not about right. rescuing. Right. So I w- didn't want to, obviously that's what I want. Is right. But I'm not going to, everyone wants that bird. Yeah. So I want to be able to just give a home to a bird that maybe isn't that way that other oh. people might reject. So I never started out saying like, I want a bird that'll be my friend and that'll talk and it'll sit on my shoulder all day. Right. But that's really what I want. Right. And so when the truth came out, they were like, well, how much attention can you give them? I'm like, I literally won't leave my house. Like nice. f- four days a week, I can be here like all day long. I go out for a run like once a day. I don't yeah. literally leave ever. And they were like, I think Elmer might be a good fit for. They were like kind of whispering, and I was like, hey, yeah, "Wait, what? Show me a picture." And then I'm like, "He's hot." Like I was, it was totally like, <laughs> "Was his hair like this? How big like, is he? He's like this. Like his body is like that big. Like he's a he's a a, a parrot, you know? Green, uh, green, all green. Cute. Oh, he's Hazel. So cute. I and I think I think yeah. Luigi and him will get along. Like Luigi loves being an only do- like I know he loves all the attention on him, but I see them him with Marion a lot of times, and I just know that he. Most of the time, he does not play with Marion at all. They are just on separate sides of the room. But there's some times where they, like, he likes to be annoyed. Like, she'll, like, start, like, biting him, and then he'll start playing. Like, he needs to be pushed and, like, to a... Yeah. And I think he would get along well with a bird that would just, like, pick at his fur and stuff and just be like... (laughs) You know? Like, I just think it's going to be cute. So we'll try it out. what's the end goal? Are you, like, will you... To get a adopt little saddle for Luigi. I want to adopt it. Yeah, I want to adopt. <laughs> get a million followers. Yeah. I want to adopt Elmer. I want to be a bird parent. I think it's like, I think it, I always say this, like it will be, if I, if I died tomorrow, it would be my one regret that I didn't have more birds in my life. Like that's, I just love them so much. And I just feel like that is just, it's always something I think about, oh, I'll get a bird when I'm older and retired and I can't right. wait till I stop doing comedy so I can just have tons of birds and start a bird rescue but it's like why not do it now if I can do it yeah so um but I also feel like getting a, a parrot that has a beak that could you know hurt like parrots bite and yeah. they like if they're threatened they will bite yeah um this is me pretty much getting my tubes tied right. because I'm signing up for a 30 right. year old a, a pet that will be in my life for 30 years yep. and it's me sending a sign to the universe of like no babies in my life right. because a baby is in birds do not mix. No. So it's kind of me getting a hysterectomy. I love it. Like and being like no kids. I like it's that. It's a sign to the universe because no guy I go. I mean, I'm, I have a boyfriend now, but like, let's say something doesn't work out and someday I, I meet a guy that wants kids and I'm like, I have a parrot that will pluck our baby's eyes out. Right. Like, uh, you know, it's just not it's not conducive Would to that be a deal breaker for you, Andrew. Uh, who needs eyes? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, it's like a boy named Sue. Yeah. He'll grow yeah. up, no eyes. I have He'll a be dog tough with as no shit. Eyes. He's yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have, a, you have a dog with Where, no he eyes. He lost them? Well, I have them in a jar on my mantle, so <laughs> they're not lost. Oh, he had like, really he had, the, like the, cancer, the, eye yeah, cancer? 100% that's I so... have them on my. No, it turned it. When I got him, he was a rescue, and he actually bit my face first, and oh, then yeah. everyone like I badly, knew. Too, yeah, badly. Right? Like badly. Like 20 stitches, surgery. Plastic surgery. It's fun. Whoa. Um, and then every all of like the dog trainers I know were like, you have Where to give this dog a plastic about. surgery on your face. It was on my lip. My like, lip was dangling from my face. Oh my God. You see like, a little bit of the scar. Yeah. So your it's revenge cool. was to rip his eyes out? <laughs> yes. That's crazy. So I was like, now you can't see me to aim for my lip. So that's what happened. <laughs> then he bit my pussy. <laughs> No, wait, wow. wait, wait, wow. wait. Wow. No, he, uh, he, so because since he was so aggressive, but he was already blind, he wouldn't let me put eye drops in his eyes. Aww. And so the cataracts turned to glaucoma, which is really painful. Yeah. And so it was like, I think it was last year. It was like 20, maybe 2020. I just could tell. Like he was like in more pain. He was rubbing his face on the couch oh, every day. I could tell they looked different. Like there was, it just looked weird. Yeah. So I took him to the specialist and she was like, he's in a lot of pain and he's blind. So either he can be in a lot of pain and be blind or no pain and blind and so I was like let's do it and then I literally just asked just for like my facts like as an animal person I was like what do you do with the eyes is it like medical waste and she was like you can send him out for a biopsy which I don't think he needs that or we do put in medical waste or you can take him home and she started laughing and I was like I'm sorry what was option three and she was like are you th- wait she was like in 25 years Natalie nobody's ever taken eyes I home want the and eyes. I was like fuck yes I love that you took the eyes yeah. because I would so want the eyes it's I want to so stuff cool. Marion when she dies like, I want to stuff like- Shelton you do yes yes what 
Why is I'm that so weird? excited. I don't think it's weird either. In like Japan, when people die, they like keep their tattoos and their pieces of skin and like frame them. I would but do like, that. Why is that weird? That's like I don't art. think it's weird at all. Yeah. I really don't. I is, is this right here? This little. I mean, is we're this practicing your old for animal? Marian. <laughs> yes, yeah. Marian. I had a miniature <laughs> llama and hedgehog. That was her childhood llama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, is that your childhood animals? <laughs> so do you have a little dog to have walks him around? Like a little like seeing eye dog for I the wish. dog. Uh, he has, she has a seeing no, eye person. I wish. <laughs> yeah. It's her. Yeah, it is you. No, he's too much of an asshole. Well, have you have seen that. those things that the dogs can wear that have like a yeah. little like a halo? Cir- a halo, and then they bump into things and they know it before. He hates those. And actually, <laughs> because he's like a poodle, he has like a, we always make sure he has a fro when we like. Oh, shave so it's him. almost like his so halo. So it's almost like a halo. So whenever he hits a wall, it brushes the wall first and he stops and bounces off. He's just like a. Have you seen him adapt to being blind? Ping pong. Oh, yeah. Is, is yeah. he okay? Yeah, like, he doesn't move fast. He kind of like almost looks like he has a cane oh, and he kind of feels sweet. and like in a new area, he'll like navigate it. Whenever we get anywhere, he like figures it out. I just have to make sure I don't put like boxes in places and things like that right. to like mess with him. When oh. you work in rescue, is it like a competition who could have the most <laughs> fucked up dog? Yes, pretty much. Pretty much. It's like, oh, right. Say, Maya see... has no ears, no legs. Yeah, I'll and... see other rescues and I'm like, damn it, they got that dog? And you're like, I want that dog. He doesn't have a halo, but I do because I'm a goddamn fucking angel Pretty much. for rescuing this blind <laughs> piece of shit. Pretty much. Um, oh. Wait, no, that's so true. Oh. Like, um, no, your dog's... He's, what, a, what a sweetie. Like, are there ever dogs, though, that, like, you do find, like... I mean, in a rescue, you see being a rescue person... I was actually reading about this last night. I'm sorry to be so tangential about it, but I was reading last night about people that have um, no empathy there was some study that i was reading on reddit about like a lack of empathy in certain people or lack of um emotion like the like you're talking about your wife like cries at the smallest thing there are certain yeah. people that like the smallest sentiment or like sadness thing makes them like lose their minds and there are other people that are just a little bit more cold turned off to right. sad stuff and those people there it was really interesting they were saying thank god for people that are a little bit more Le- less empathetic a yeah. little more sociopathic we might say <laughs> because those people are EMTs yeah. they're the people that clean off the, you know when someone yeah. kills himself on the uh, right. uh, train the tracks yeah. like w- most people you wouldn't be able to function oh it was right. someone on Reddit sharing that they were in a train that hit a person jumping and they just felt the bump and because of the bump they felt of someone dying they were like I can't continue my like I'm so depressed I can't stop sobbing right. and yet there were people on the train around me that just seemed to be like going on with their lives right. talking on their phones how could people do that and people were like well you're someone that couldn't do be an EMT couldn't be a doctor couldn't right. be a surgeon do you feel like I think that people in rescue are so empathetic, but at the same time, I could never do it because of the horror, horrible yeah. things you see. I was going to say, I think it's like almost with practice because like I almost now feel like I do have like a cold heart. You have to get too sensitive <laughs> to I'm it. I'm so used to it. You but like, much. You see it too much. People come in all the time to like our store and they'll say like, you know, like they'll just tell me about their own rescue dog and they just want to like tell me the story and they're like, can you believe it? It like was found like this and like that. And I'm like, yeah, like that's nothing to me. Nothing. Like I don't even know. And what, what if you're they're not rescued? About. You have to deal with Ooh, the other side, that's right? It's real difficult. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Especially now that we own a pet supply store. In my mind, I really just thought like everyone rescues. Nope. Like oh, just, so people come into your store that are like, like it's my, my French bulldog. Yeah, or my I'm getting my puppy in two weeks, and I'm like, oh, where from Kansas? I'm like, mmm. <laughs> and then of course they're like, let me show you pictures again. Maria, my wife, oh. she's so nice, and she'll be like, great, let me. Yeah, sure, I'll see pictures of your puppy, and I'm just basically like, do you want to buy something? Get out. Yeah, you like, love I don't buying. Fucking care. So do you want to buy something? Yeah, for me? do you want to buy something for me? Yeah. Otherwise, get out of my store. Uh, well, I'm going to sit here and talk about your corgi. Yeah. Me and uh, my girlfriend, who's 16 years younger than me, I'm really hot, and with an old, old soul? middle soul. Okay. Like, not that <laughs> <Middle> old. <soul. laughs> uh, it's, an, it's just in her tits. It's great. Um, uh, <laughs> that's where it all stocks up. But um, we went and looked for a, a rescue dog, mm-hmm. and you know, Nikki found Luigi and Marion, and I was looking for something similar to that. Like, I love... No, it's Luigi. I love Marion so much. Yeah. It's like insane how much Luigi's I relate okay. to this dog. Yeah. And I relate a little to Luigi, but he, you know, he's. Is he dead? He might. What's going on? He's dead. <laughs> and now Nikki needs a new dog also. <laughs> but like, I feel like it's so hard to. F- we went to, I think, six, to five different shelters. And just to find yeah. anything even remotely in that area was very. You're difficult. talking about small dogs. Small dogs. Yeah. And I guess there's that website that you were telling me about that I. 
that we well, ended up getting finder. a cat. We ended up rescuing a cat. Oh, that's nice. But well, I think first of all, the one mistake is no offense is like people get in their mind what they want, and mm-hmm. like that's fine. But I also feel like just try to open it up to personality. Yeah. Um. But what about size? When you're talking about like sure, we if just you like have, have to have an pit, apartment, pit yeah, ball. or something like that, I guess then you have to do that. But I still just say like kind of be open because I hear that all the time where they're like, my friend's dog looks like this, and I love that dog. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I want that. <laughs> so weird that the i need a dog that looks a certain way and and i didn't mean thought, look i just meant more of a vibe like yeah. it didn't have to be i mean yeah. nothing looks like marion right i mean yeah believe me I, <laughs> she no. was in my house and i still regret giving her away. i know there are so many people that wanted her because she was up for adoption for a short time when i had her and i was posting how did you people. find marion like she no no like how did you get it done like were you on the web like ready to go like like a day trader because I'm sure no, there was a Natalie huge demand wrote for to me. I think and was like oh. I was I was looking into getting another foster just because I was like I think I want another dog for Luigi and then I think it was yeah. she was just available at that time that yeah, I yeah it was kind the of the perfect time yeah yeah because we had her in our house for a bit and I think I kind of knew that I was like if she stays longer I'm gonna keep her and you're like we can't yeah <laughs> and this was like before no eye dogs so I was Oof. like I we only wanted two dogs and I was like I can't keep this you can't dog get another and I think there was dog. another foster who needed me quickly so I was like I need that dog so if I can find a foster and where did she you was find Marion I remember she was at a shelter Marion oh. yeah. when you sent me the picture I have to say I was like oh this isn't like the kind of dog I want in terms terms of like looks i just don't like little i've never liked shih tzu dogs like right. the dogs that look like shih tzus the dogs that look like you know just yorkies. those yeah yorkies i just right. don't like that look of dog i never have for some reason i love those dogs but i just the look of them is not what i want and it just didn't matter like i had to just put that aside and be like okay it doesn't matter and then obviously I, the thing is you can love any animal yeah. the second you just get to know them right. and i mean i love all animals no matter what i yeah. can just say yeah. i don't like certain dogs sure. just the looks of them yeah. corgis i'm just like Ugh. right right but i just <laughs> yeah. i just they gross me out sorry if you own well, a corgi i'm I mean, sure they and as you know you out. with my who's your doggy show that's kind of the whole point of that is like then you're getting to learn what your dogs are and there yes. might be a breed in there that you hate yes. for whatever, you know, in quotes because yeah. you just have a generalization about them. Or like them. you know someone that but had that dog and out. they were annoying and right. so you project it onto them. Like I don't, right. if you have a corgi out there, please do not be upset with me that I don't like your dog. But they just seem like, I just, I have neighbors <laughs> that have corgis and I've they just seem them. like paranoid and like, yeah. and they're just like a little fat, like they're scraping the bottom of the carpet all the time yeah. and they're just like, ah! And they're always like pulling on the leash and they don't seem like in tune with the world. And they, I just, there's something. I get it. There's nothing against their bodies are made like bridges with nothing to hold them up in the middle. So they're freaked out because they're like, I'm going to collapse at any moment. And I love that. I'm so sorry for corgis. I'm sorry. And if my neighbors hear this, I, it's nothing against your, you probably hate my dogs because my dogs are constantly off the leash, freaking your corgis that are (laughs) properly leashed. Just owning the building. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just always say it's like dating. Like everybody has a type, right? But does anyone end up with that type? It's like you gotta like, a lot of times people are like, I like this type. And then it ends up being about the personality. So it's like the same with dogs. It's like, don't have a type. Just be like, I'm open. I want them young. Yeah. yeah I wanted like 14 years younger and, <laughs> and I got an old 16. Soul. <laughs> and it was just weird. Yeah. It's weird. I never expected two more years. You want a dog who's two <laughs> years old, but like 47 in people years. Yeah. Who listens to Tom Petty. <laughs> 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 Elmer loves. I wonder what music Elmer loves. You, oh my god! I he's know cute. when parrots dance and they do that like <laughs> so cute, and they're just like that's so cute. I, I just can't wait. I know. I'm, I what was, time are, is he coming? He, they're coming at six to to check out my space. So I got to clean up and damn make it, it. Look presentable. And my get flight's them. at six fifty. Oh, Tell them to it. come in an hour. I know. Well, I can't. I need to straighten up a little bit. My I have not had time to unpack. And this, yeah, there's. I just got to get all my bird hazards out of the way. Right. My open fans <laughs> that have no <laughs> no covers. Your yeah. scissors that say kill birds yeah my yeah. scissors that just <laughs> are cutting on the in the air no matter what they just are constantly <laughs> cutting slicing the air uh my knife sculpture your yeah. ar-15 that's yeah. you gotta get rid of that regardless all the open wi- all the open windows and um <laughs> that just say jump yeah yeah uh so <laughs> yeah wait are his wings clipped uh no i don't think they so. will they be don't. when they go through the scissor gauntlet <laughs> <laughs> Poor Elmer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he'll be tough. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, all the birds that I met that day were just like, you know, this 
a ki- the kids wanted to get a bird. They yeah. got this bird, yeah. and then they didn't realize it bites. That it doesn't talk as much as they wanted to. It doesn't do tricks. People just uh, people are such idiots. They're such idiots. Just please. I also don't get why it's not illegal to have a bird. Like they should be. They're a bird. They're supposed to be free and be, flying because oh. breeders. I know, but it should be illegal. It should be illegal because the, the breeders get them originally from people stealing them out right. of nests in the rainforest. I, I know. Mean, there was one bird they had that they were like, we because it's so good with humans, we know that it was stolen as a baby. It Ugh. wasn't from a breeder. It was definitely taken as a baby out of a tree, which is what they currently do. I mean, you've seen these things of people crossing the border, going through customs, and they yeah. find like 18 birds on their <laughs> right. belt, typed, and like put in these little tubes <laughs> along right. a belt, right. and they're just birds in these little tubes like... <laughs> Uh, and they're just they're, who have forty pounds of cocaine. I was in just them. gonna say, yeah, so much and then coke inside, in them also. <laughs> like these guys are smuggling birds. <laughs> and then they cut the birds open. It's a it's fucking like ostrich right. with heroin in it. Right. Yeah, that's how the birds stay calm as they're all pumped with heroin inside them. Yeah, it's fucked up. Um, yeah, it sucks. and my I had a friend write to me the other day being like. My daughter wants a bird. Um, where where should we go? And I was like, nowhere. You don't get one. Yeah, like you. I yeah. just go. Um, Get a guinea pig, but make sure to get two. Like, if you need a quick animal, yes. guinea pig, make sure to get two to get because two. they will kill themselves. They yeah. literally will bang. I started disturbing her so much. Good. I wrote to her. <laughs> this is such a funny conversation. I don't conversation. even know who she is, but I don't like her. No, I I was mad because she was like, my kids just keep asking me for a bird. And I was like, um, no. Oh, okay, so this is this she goes was she goes was it hard taking care of a bird this is out of nowhere and yeah. i said yes do not get one unless you rescue please don't buy one from a pet store or breeder parakeets are easy but please go through star st louis avian rescue thanks for asking she said oh that's good to know i've never heard of star i said i hadn't either she goes was it a pain in the ass to take care of i said um yes read up on them parakeets are easy if they have each other or get played with enough but buying birds is the worst. They steal them from the nests in the rainforest. She goes, that is so sad. <laughs> I said, it's such a gross industry. Honestly, any animal breeder is disgusting. Even dogs. Rescue is the way to go. And there's always a rescue for any animal you want to get. She said, for some reasons, I only for some reason I only thought dogs and cats were important rescue animals. I didn't even realize other animals had the option. I said, just don't buy from pets, pet, pet smart ever, 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 ever. Yes. I said, it's so unknown. She goes, I'm so glad I asked. I said, I do a lot of bird rescue work because no one knows. I don't know either. I didn't know either. And she goes, that's awesome i said there's a documentary on netflix called parrot confidential that taught me about it might be good to watch before you get a bird anyway she said okay totally we probably won't get any animals but i was just curious because the girls keep begging us i said it's a great it's a great pet but kids get bored of them quickly and the birds that are an interactive are big and live like 30 years they are a huge commitment guinea pigs are good but they absolutely need to be bought in twos or they'll die young of loneliness she goes that's so sad I said they sometimes bash their heads on the sides of cages to commit suicide. Pet ownership is tragic. I don't recommend Googling the truth. It'll make you want to giddy pig yourself. (laughs) And she goes, that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. And that was the end of the conversation. I'm glad you were honest. I just like to scare people away from, because that is true. But it's true. I think chinchillas do it too. They will literally commit suicide by banging their heads on the sides of cages. And it's illegal in Europe. To have, one, to, have. to have one guinea pig. Yes. Oh. You have to have Why two. isn't it illegal to, here? Because people too. are idiots in America. Because we just like don't Nobody care cares. about animals. Yeah. It's do you just do so cats sad. too? Should I have two mm-hmm. cats? No, I cats mean, are more solitary. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering. No, I'm I mean, just wondering. you don't, shouldn't, but or should. But I mean, yeah. I also do think that because cats don't go out and like see other cats. Like they're only by themselves forever. So maybe get a second, but I'm sure it's fine. Just, yeah, maybe yeah. just look into it. Cat loneliness doubling up on. Just Google it. Yeah, yeah. give it a goog. Yeah, I and mean, see the truth. I love this fucking cat. What's you its love. Name? He hates me, but Mango. Mango. Yeah, I know. Isn't it weird when you love an animal so much and they he just sleeps don't on the bed? For you. I swear to God, we I have a king now. Not to brag or anything. Mm-hmm. I'm on this side. He sleeps on the far left corner. Like Cute. it like literally as far as you can. Get Thirty-eight from. You feet away from me. Yeah. Okay. And where is she? I didn't know if you just had she's, a king she's bed. She's in the. King. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like I have a king bed. I lay and on she's one on the side. other corner. <laughs> I was like, where is she? Okay. Yeah, no, that would look- be weird to have a king bed as a single person, <laughs> especially if you slept on one side and not even in the middle. Oh, that's, that's why I was asking. Point. I was like, but not even when I'm in a hotel room and I have a, a queen bed or a king bed, I'm always on one side of it. Are I you? never go to the middle. Do you oh, go, go to the middle? Yeah, you go to the middle. I like get in it and move it, and I'm like this. Oh, I've never done the middle. I'm like, I sleep like I'm in a box car for some reason. It's so weird. Okay, we gotta go. Um, do you want to take us out on a wrap? All day, never go away. The shelter took my dog's eyes. I can never see him, and he can't see me, but I can see his heart. It's a reality. His legs were short, and my heart is long. Man, this is not a rap, but it's a song. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> you can check out. Um, tell us where we can find out all about the. Uh, so Mayday Rescue, the rescue that uh, M-A-D. Luigi and Marion came from. M A E D A Y Rescue on Instagram. It'll be on our YouTube as well. And hopefully we'll sell the show and you'll see it everywhere. Yes. So, so you're taking that show out. Yes. Who's your doggy? Which my mom did name, yes. by the way. Yes. Nikki's mother named oh. the show. We were filming it a while back, just the kidding. first part of it, where we were getting swabbing the dogs. And Natalie was like, we are still trying to think of a name. And my mom was just like, you said yesterday that my, she pictured my mom just, she's in her phone, just like after we shot something, just kind of like going through Instagram. And she was just like, who's your doggy? Yeah, didn't even look up, didn't even like skip a beat. I was like, I've been stressed for three months. I can't figure out the show name. She and she like literally was like, why not? Going Who's to... your doggy? And I was like, Fuck. And we all were just like, yeah, that's really good. I was like, done. And then it yeah. was done. My mom's like, all right, name the show. Yeah. Got it. I did it. <laughs> um, all right, Natalie, thank you so much for being here. Thank this you was for so much having fun me. answering all our lesbian and rescue questions. Of course. Um, don't be cut. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow on the show. Jeez. Jack, my eyes. Rescue.